Okay, let's talk a little bit about vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is the pressure that a liquid will exert in a vapor form against the atmosphere. Okay, so in reality, a total, if you have a closed system for vapor pressure, the pressure total is going to be whatever the atmospheric gases total plus your vapor pressure. Okay, and so it's independent of the atmospheric pressure because what vapor pressure relies on are the internal uh, forces, the intermolecular forces and the kinetic energy of the molecules within the liquid. So no matter what the atmosphere does, the liquid is going to exert this pressure against the atmosphere um, no matter what. And so one thing we can say though is that high vapor pressure means low intermolecular force. If the molecules are being held together less, they're going to exert a higher vapor pressure against the atmosphere and, and consequently boil at a lower temperature. And vapor pressure um, exceeding the atmospheric pressure or equaling the atmospheric pressure is where the normal boiling point occurs. Okay, If that's a one atmosphere um, pressure. If it's greater than that, then you've got to exceed that vapor pressure of that atmospheric pressure in order to make uh, boiling occur. Temperature does have a big effect on vapor pressure. But let's kind of look at this, this diagram here and say, well, what if we just placed a liquid in a vacuum initially? Um, there would be no liquid, no gaseous vapor above the liquid at all. But over time, we're going to equilibrate to a dynamic equilibrium where we're going to have um, vaporization and condensation occurring at the same time. So if we're looking at um, the second figure here, our rate that we have of um, vaporization is going to be greater than our rate of condensation. Okay, we're not quite to the vapor pressure yet, so we've got to evaporate more than we condense. But at all times, we're going to have molecules escaping the liquid phase and a little bit going back in okay but at this point we're greater vaporization than condensation once we reach equilibrium if we're in a very small container or a small enough container um, we're going to have an equ equilibrium where the rates of evaporization are going to equal the rate of condensation and that's when we achieve the true vapor pressure everything remains constant at this point once we reach equilibrium. If we're in a smaller container, we're going to notice a drop in the level of the liquid. Maybe it's too small to see, okay, but it's going to reduce some of the some of the amount of liquid, but we're always going to have an equal amount of molecules that are available to escape and an equal amount that are adding at any given point so that the pressure, vapor pressure remains constant. However, if the container is big enough or if there is no container, eventually all your liquid is going to evaporate and we're not ever going to achieve the, pre the vapor pressure. So the pressure of that vapor is going to be, or that liquid that's formed is going to be less than the true vapor pressure than we'd expect. Here is where when we reach the dynamic equilibrium, that's where we equal the vapor pressure. Okay, And so it depends on the container size. So let's look at an example where we're not quite sure about the container size. And so we have a pail with a certain amount of water in dry conditions. So that means no water in the air. Um, it's essentially a vacuum as far as water is concerned. It doesn't matter what the pressure of other gases are, but the air is dry. And that room measures a certain amount here in meters. Will the pail be empty when the vapor pressure equilibrates? And so what's that final partial pressure going to be if it does um, end up being less than the vapor pressure? Or if it's exceed, or if it is the vapor pressure? So what we do is we ask, what if? What if all the uh, liquid evaporates? Then what is the total amount of pressure that we would get? And so if we ask that question, um, PV equals NRT is where we go. So we just need to calculate the pressure. Volume is going to be in meters cubed, we'll calculate that, excuse me, right here, volume, and so we end up with 150 meters cubed if we multiply those together. Problem is our gas constant R, remember, is 0 0.08206 
time, uh, and the units are liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. So we don't want meters cubed, we want liters instead. So what do we do? Well, we can do this by going to centimeters and then by going back to liters. And so if we remember that a hundred centimeters is one meter, well, we've got to cancel out three meter units. So we've got to cube this 100 centimeters per meter. So 100 centimeters cubed per meter cubed will cancel everything out. And at this point, if we remember that a centimeter cubed is a milliliter, okay, then we cancel centimeters cubed. We're in milliliters. Well, that just tells us, well, then we have a liter uh, per thousand milliliters. Okay, and if we do this calculation, meters cubed cancels, centimeters cubed cancels, milliliters cancel, and we get liters for our calculation. That's 150,000 of them in this room, 150,000 liters. So we've got volume, number of moles. If everything evaporates, here's the key, it's 4.56 liters of water. And so we've got to convert that to moles And we know that a gram is one milliliter of water. And so if we convert to milliliters, so a thousand milliliters per liter, liters is gone, then one gram per 1,000 milliliter, or per one milliliter, excuse me, milliliters is canceled. And then we can say, well, the molar mass um, of our water here is a mole per per eighteen Point zero two grams of water, and that's going to eventually give us two hundred and fifty three point one moles of water at this point. And so now temperature in our given was 50 degrees Celsius and we convert to Kelvin and we get 323.2 Kelvin. So we've got our PV equals NRT set up to go. And so in this case, we say, all right, pressure times 150,000 liters is equal to 253.1 moles times the gas constant, 0 0.08206 liter ATMs, oops, excuse me, liter ATMs per per mole Kelvin and RT, so we need our temperature, 323.2 Kelvin. And so we cancel Kelvin, cancel moles, and then liters divides both sides. We're left with atmospheres just like we wanted there. And so pressure anyway. And so we divide all that out. We get 0 0.04475 atmospheres. But our vapor pressure is given in millimeters of mercury. So we've got to do one more conversion. We know that 760 millimeters of mercury is one atmosphere cancel atmospheres and we get 34.01 millimeters of mercury. So did everything evaporate? Well, the vapor pressure is 92.5 millimeters of mercury. So no, it's less than the vapor pressure. That's our final pressure, 34.01. We could say three significant figures is 34.0, but 34.01 millimeters of mercury 
is our um, final pressure and that's less than the vapor pressure that means not enough was available to evaporate all the way if the pressure we calculated was greater than the vapor pressure then the pressure in the container in the room would just have to be the vapor pressure because it would equilibrate at no higher ever than the vapor pressure but here we're lower so we get a lower value and everything evaporates <laughs>